Hey man, say man. That was though. But what's good YouTube? I'm back with another reaction. It's gonna be our third reaction on the channel. But look, today Today we're gonna be reacting to four true horror stories animated. By my boy issues. Mort. Oh yeah, by my boy by Mort. Yeah, no. Start but, uploading him on my channel too. I'm gonna put his first reaction to I'm gonna put his channel in the description. Y'all go subscribe. But yeah, we finna get to this video. <laughs> Back when I was seventeen I used to babysit for our neighbor. Who at the time was a single mother who happened to be going through a particularly nasty divorce. She had two young sons, one of which was eight years old while the other was only around eighteen months. They were absolutely adorable and very well behaved kids, but you could tell that they were going through a lot and the older one definitely showed signs of stress over the whole thing. And I'll never forget the time he asked me why his daddy couldn't live with them anymore, and it honestly broke my heart. Not because I didn't have an answer for him, but because to hear it would have just been too much to bear. Too much for anyone to bear. Anyway, after a few months of being alone, she finally decided to get back on the old dating horse. I was so happy for her. After such a rough time, she deserved to find happiness again, to find someone who had the wherewithal to be a real father to these two adorable little boys. So one night she leaves on her date and says she'll be back around midnight and not a moment later. Only she doesn't tell me exactly where she's going and I have no way to contact her because this was back in the 80s and no one had a cell phone. Well they did exist but not in the available commercial sense. It was all landlines back then. Otherwise this might not have gone the way it did. So on the night in question, I'm chilling on the couch, absent-mindedly flicking through the TV channels. I put the kids to bed an hour previous, they're sleeping like rocks, and everything seems fine and dandy. When suddenly there's a knock at the front door. I wasn't expecting anyone, but then again, it wasn't my house, so I felt kind of obligated to answer and take a message or whatever. Only as I started walking down the hallway towards the front door, Whoever is on the other side starts banging against it and cursing up a storm. Cheryl, I know you're in there. Open the door. Now what was exactly said, I don't remember, but I'm not keen on repeating some of the words they used. It was really, really harsh. So I'm just frozen, looking at the door in total fright when the oldest boy came flying out of his room and down the stairs, running to the door and yelling, Daddy's home! I grab him, pull him away from the door. I had no idea what this guy's intentions were, and after all, they were probably divorced for a freaking reason. But I almost fainted with fear when I hear the words, I got my shotgun in my truck, and tonight, I'm going to teach you a lesson you'll never forget. He screams this, but then I hear his footsteps move up the gravel path. It appeared he wasn't bluffing at all, and if that was the case then our lives were clearly in danger. When he gets back, he's banging on the door and threatening to start shooting through it if no one opens. I grab both kids and run out the back door and cross the street to my house where my mom calls the police. When the police arrive a few minutes later, they actually find the ex-husband taking a massive dump on Cheryl's porch. He was arrested and I wait with the kids at my house for their mom to show up. Everyone was in tears by that point, even my mom, who was normally a pretty reserved woman. I mean, maybe he was just having a manic episode and no one was in real danger, but honestly, it was one of the most terrifying nights of my entire life. This is exactly when your boy was going when my grandfather was younger, he became the principal of an elementary school. He was in his late 20s, early 30s at the time, and despite being young, he was a born leader. He was a great principal and everyone loved him. I can attest to that as I attended multiple award ceremonies for him and the respect and admiration he received was crazy. There was a young boy at the school who was having behavioral issues in class and my grandfather saw that the kid didn't have a lot of parental support. So he called him his father and had talked with him about spending more time with his son in just a general parenting session. It turned out that all the boy needed was his dad's attention 
and after a few weeks, he was a happy model student. Whenever my grandfather would leave school late, he would see the dad was playing basketball with his son after he got home from work. It was one of those moments that he took pride in, being able to make a difference in people's lives. However, nothing had such an easy solution, and my grandfather found himself having to deal with an employee, Stanley the janitor, who was showing up to work drunk. Stanley was an alcoholic with a mean streak, and my grandfather tried on multiple occasions to deal with his behavior. Finally, one day Stanley showed up so drunk that my grandfather sent him home and called the superintendent to let him know he was going to be firing him the next morning after he sobered up. He then warned them to let him deal with it when Stanley was sober because he was not a stable person. As it goes in these kinds of stories, the superintendent was furious and decided that he was going to call Stanley himself and fire him despite my grandfather's warning. No one called my grandfather to tell him about it either, so he was completely in the dark and thought he could deal with it in the morning. Stanley was furious and went to the school that evening. He searched the offices, my grandfather's included, and tore things apart until he finally had what he wanted. He was in a blaze of fury and on his way out, he saw the father and his son playing basketball. He walked towards them and pulled something out of his trousers. It was a gun. He then proceeded to shoot the little boy, killing him instantly. The father was so upset, was hysterically crying but somehow managed to get the gun away from Stanley and shoot him. My grandfather was called to the elementary school immediately by the police because there were two dead bodies. The little boy and Stanley were dead. What was even worse was the crying from the father and him saying that he couldn't save his son. It was clear that he could never forgive himself for that day. My grandfather was pulled aside by one of the police who would search Stanley for evidence. They had found a list, a hit list of people that he was going to kill and all the addresses of those people that he had retrieved when he searched the offices. My grandfather was number one on that list. So, if it weren't for that father, it's likely that I would never been able to meet my grandfather and possibly my mother and grandmother would have been killed if Stanley had been able to complete his mission. To this day, I get goosebumps whenever I hear that story, and it's just so chilling. My grandfather never uttered a single word about this after his initial recount, and my mother made me swear to never tell him I knew. He carried the weight of that boy's death on him until the day he died. I live in a house compound and one day me and my family were visiting a friend's house. After a couple of hours, my mom and my friend's mom ask us to go fetch something from my house. So we go back to my home, which is a long way from his, and the walk seemed uncomfortably long and creepy and had an eerie atmosphere for some reason. After ages of walking, we reach my house and we get the thing they needed which was inside the house. So I unlocked the door and got the object and I noticed the bathroom door was lit and the exhaust fan was on which we usually turn off unless someone is using the toilet. But I didn't give that any attention and thought my dad was using the toilet since he wasn't in my friend's house when we left. So me and my buddy decided to wait outside the house for my dad to finish and I occasionally went to the small window outside the bathroom and called for my dad but I didn't get an answer. But I heard someone humming and singing so I thought that he was having a good time. After a good half an hour passed, I started feeling uneasy and told my friend we had to leave because our parents are probably angry now. When we arrive at his house, we were shocked to see my dad sitting and talking to my friend's parents. We asked him, where were you? And he said, I didn't go anywhere. I just stayed here since we first came. This made me scared because my family had been here for three hours and we just waited for my dad for one hour. I go ask my sister the same question and get the same response. Someone was surely in my bathroom. After the visit is done, we go back home just to find the front door which I locked and unlocked and the bathroom door was wide open. My family acted normally but I was completely freaking out and I couldn't get any sleep that night.
That wasn't even horror for real. It wasn't, but that's crazy. It wasn't even horror. First and last time I babysat, back when I was 16 in the early 80s. I just got a driver's license and needed gas and insurance money for the old beat up car I'd bought. I was watching two boys, about six and ten, while parents went out to celebrate some anniversary or something. They had promised to be home at eleven. At the time, cell phones were pretty rare, so no way to contact them other than calling the restaurant. Evening was going great until about 9.30 when their large, aggressive Doberman goes crazy running around the house barking and growling before running into the basement, refusing to come up. It sort of freaks me out a bit because this dog is huge, aggressive, and very protective of the house and kids. I do a quick check of the house and kids and everyone was okay. I let the dog stay in the basement, put kids to bed at around 10 as instructed by the parents, job done. So I'm watching TV at around 10.30 when, suddenly, I begin to smell something burning. Running into the youngest boy's room and find the oldest boy in bed with him. Both are asleep, so I wake them both and tell them that we need to get the dog and go outside. But the dog just straight up refuses to leave the basement. And I had to prioritize. So I get the kids outside and tell them to sit in the front yard while I go in to call the fire department. I'm not showing good judgment here, but I was 16. Oldest says, I left a candle burning under my bed. Because I go back in. Yep, a candle under their bed, since apparently monsters couldn't live anywhere where there's light. I know, dumb kids. As I open the door to go back in, there's this huge explosion behind me across the street and power goes out. The kids start screaming and follow me back into the house. I grab the phone, but there's no dial tone. I get the kids out of the house again, onto the back porch this time and make it really clear that they're to stay there. I can still hear the dog whimpering in the basement. I run to the oldest kid's bedroom with the fire extinguisher and flashlight from the kitchen and look under the bed through hazy smoke. The offending candle has gone out, but has burnt a hole in the box spring which also has gone out. I flip the box spring and blast it with the extinguisher just in case. I then run to the front porch to see the transformer on a telephone pole had exploded. A lightning pole... What? Lighting the pole on fire and taking out the phone and electricity service for the street. I run and check on the box springs which are still out. I open the bedroom windows to air out the room then get the kids off the back porch into the living room onto the couch where they both are just crying their eyes out. The oldest was apologizing for the fire but insisted that if he didn't keep the candle lit, then, of course, monsters would get him. The fire department shows up for the transformer at around 11. The kids fall asleep on the couch at around midnight after watching the firemen across the street put out the transformer fire. The power comes back on at about 1.30 a.m. The parents show up at 2.30 a.m. when they were supposed to be back by 11. They're somewhat buzzed and start complaining that the kids are not in bed and the oldest room is trashed with a flipped over mattress and dry fire extinguisher powder covering the box springs. And to add insult to injury, they straight up refuse to pay me. The situation gets really tense and, would you believe it, the Doberman picks this time to come out of the basement and starts aggressively growling at me. Walked out with a dollar to my name and I never babysat again. Oh, what? Bro. It ain't her fucking fault, oh. boys. Yo, stupid ass kid, bro. That's the end. That one ain't no horror. Stop, 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 stop. That wasn't no horror. It's not her fault, bro. That her the nigga child left a a candle in his bed because he was afraid of monsters. Who? Um, look, you done? That shit stupid. <laughs> I. That one ain't no horror. By two of those one ain't no horror. I'll let us time react to Mort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mort gotta go, bro. Go he's he's done. He's done. Tweaking. What the hell? Well, look. He's done. Hey, look. We at the end of this video. Like and subscribe and share this video. And roll to 400. We have 300 subs right now, but we lit.